Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and I have handily found the solution to the melee problem for everyone involved um, in the current game. And that is simply to just throw a shitload of currency at a character and use some busted mechanics, some busted sentences, some busted gear, and you have yourself a pretty viable melee character. All it took was throwing roughly 60 exalts worth of busted shit at a scion, which is pretty notoriously one of the strongest ascendancies for insane gear scaling and lo and behold you got a pretty nice melee character. So this character here is built around the Paradoxica sword which has been pretty well known to be very strong to build around and uh, you can do just about any attack with it or any attack that works with a sword rather and then if you just stack a bunch of abyssal jewels uh, build some defensive sort of tree you have yourself a huge amount of damage while still being able to get uh, some good utility and some good defense I personally always try and make myself a nice chunky wild striker some something like uh, near the end of a league uh, just because it seems like a good character to invest a lot of currency into and have a lot of fun at the end of a league. And uh, this time around, I could actually make a very successful one for single target as well as uh, area clear, simply because the build here is completely broken. Uh, Abyssal Jewel stacking compa uh, paired with uh, Paradoxica is just something that shouldn't really be happening, but here it is, and uh, it lets you have insane damage. Because as I'm sure most of you should know by now, Wild Strike is really nothing special on the melee spectrum. Uh, most melee skills aren't anything special on that spectrum because they are just basically default attacks with a bit of extra flavor to them. Something like a Blade Flurry or a Molten Strike has all this extra multiplier that ends up meaning instead of hitting for like, let's say 200% of your damage, you're hitting for something like 400% of your damage on a single Single target. Wild Strike basically is just like a 180% hit and then it's got a bunch of funky shit after that so it is really good for clear speed especially when paired with Ancestral Call as you should be able to see from most of this video uh, but the single target doesn't really have anything special associated to it so the only way to fix it is to just raise your damage through the roof and that's what we've done here uh, letting me kill every guardian in a couple of seconds letting me uh, do complete phasings of Uber Elder, doing some deep delves, some um, of the toughest bosses out there, and thanks to Slayer Overleech and a, if you want to, build a tanky uh, sort of scion, you can do all of that uh, without too much effort. So the problem here ends up being that melee can actually be pretty viable in this game, it just takes a lot more scaling than a spellcaster, for example. To get a similar amount of damage uh, on a various type of caster, we could say Magma Rob, we could say Ice Nova, we could say Blade Vortex, it takes infinitely less currency and gear stacking than it does a melee character like this, and chances are you'll be safer to play those characters either way. Uh, this one, like I said, I had to use a pretty strong weapon here, a Paradoxica, which doubles all of your damage, and then I stacked 13 Abyssal Jewels, each costing something like 1 to 3 exalts and doing a huge amount of extra damage. And then, well, I've got a character that basically compares to my Ice Nova in damage um, and is still lots of fun to play. So these melee characters are very fun to play, and like I said, it just takes a bunch of gear scaling to get them up. So all that really means is that plenty of these skills probably just need a numbers tweak so that they actually become viable in the current game compared to the other things. If you take out this sort of Paradoxica scaling and all the most OP scalings out there and then give Wild Strike, let's say, 50% more damage than it currently has, at least against a single target when there's nothing nearby, let's say, uh, it becomes pretty viable and not too bad to scale and you could most likely make some successful melee builds without feeling like you're gimping yourself actually trying to play the game. So... This is the character, and um, for the most part, from here on out, I'll probably just talk about the character, because uh, the melee debate, well, it's going to be something that's going to be changing in the next big expansion. A uh, bit of a melee rework, I'm sure a lot of these skills will actually get numerical buffs, 
and there will be some potential other uh, melee quality of lifes. But this is the character. It is Wild Strike, Scion Slayer, Pathfinder using Paradoxica and Abyssal Jewels. And these clips here at the moment are going through like my deepest delves of 530, 550, something like that. And I haven't quite built for that sort of stuff. I've built for the regular game, the Uber Elders, uh, certain bosses and stuff. If you want to start going deep delving, uh, at least on um, my level of deep delving, you definitely have to start building into more life. So something like 7k life, uh, maybe a few more defensive flasks, and uh, you really don't need anywhere near this much type of damage. Um, as you can see, Uber Elder phases get phased pretty damn quickly. Slayer Overleech lets me survive some pretty stupid shit out there that, you know, just lets you have a lot more mistakes. And it becomes a really well-rounded character. Uh, something that, well, once you have enough currency to do, it's pretty much worth picking um, Scion uh, Ascendant as a Slayer plus whatever you want. But Pathfinder means you can sustain your flasks pretty much infinitely. So it is usually the biggest quality of life to use because you don't really need the other Ascendancies for pure damage. Uh, so Uber Elder, I did a good three or four of those runs, all deathless, all pretty face roll. This is a pure tool run over here, just getting a bit of XP and then testing my DPS against the boss. And none of these bosses when you're using damage on full life and uh, Ellie Focus as a swap into single target really survive any sort of... Um, any sort of these hits. And like I said, with damage on full life and Slayer Overleech, those things work pretty damn nicely together. You've also got those 13 spirit charges you can see on my character every now and again. Once they stack up from the Hail Negator Helm, they give you a huge bunch of extra effective HP because as soon as you get hit, those spirit charges expire and basically act as an automatic life flask. So you see that Slayer Leech going to absolute work against this depth 500 plus all. Uh, most of my characters would just be falling over, dying to this shit almost immediately, because you I don't really play the tank game, I usually play the avoidance game, but this one can easily take plenty of hits, even against the hardest content I've personally ever had to face. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to build this type of character, but it's extremely expensive, and uh, just something I needed to dump the rest of my currency into, and make a successful wild strike out of. Alright, so here we are with um, Chat is Toxica, level 93 Scion, using the Paradoxica sword, and uh, to build this character, you stack a bunch of Abyssal Jewels and use a Paradox Cut. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy your melee build. But seriously, it is pretty much that simple. Uh, a lot of these items at this point do cost a fair bit because of the uh, nerf to drop rates and stuff. So actually getting two Abyssal Sockets onto your Tomb Fists, onto your Bubonics, onto Hail Negator, um, they do kind of cost a bit. And like I said, the only reason I did this was to try and dump all of my currency uh, on Betrayal into a single character and uh, just make something strong. Unlike I usually do, I'm always going for some budget options. I'm always trying to be pretty frugal about my spending. With this one, I just went all out and uh, wanted to see exactly how this Paradoxica Bustedness currently works. So this Paradoxica I found off the Mastermind fight uh, myself and then you unveil two mods and I happen to get the attacks with pen uh, with weapon penetrate elemental and then also attack speed which is pretty much ideal for this sort of build so it's the best kind of paradox going around for that and it does cost something like 10 exalts or at least did on betrayal and around that I then had to build with just flat abyssal jewel stacking and uh, scaling some elemental damage crit and crit multi and that means that your passive tree is uh, pretty just heavily going towards a lot and lots of jewels. So we have one, two, um, hold on, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine jewels on the passive tree, and then I've got a bunch throughout my gear. And the goal is to just get as much of this uh, flat elemental damage, so elemental damage to attacks, swords, uh, and then crit multi as you can throughout these jewels. And some of these jewels I made myself, some I bought for about 
anywhere from one to three exalts. Some I bought for about one exalt and then slammed as in uh, put in an exalt into these. So like these, for example, they were three property jewels, put an exalt, got nothing out of it. Uh, this was a three property, put an exalt, got crit multi. So you can win, you can lose with the uh, additional slamming. But overall, each of these jewels is worth like almost a flat um, added cold or added lightning gem. And that's insane because uh, those are supposed to be the old scaling uh, gems of elemental damage. And nowadays you can just shove like 10 to 13 of those into a build. Um, and get a shit load of scaling from your damage. Now, a lot of our damage in the tooltip doesn't really uh, show up because we got some penetration going on. Paradoxica, double damage mod doesn't show up in the tooltip. And overall, I have about 3 million DPS with Wild Strike, which is quite a lot because, like I said, Wild Strike is not that good itself as a scaling skill. So, uh, a real skill like Blade Flurry has something like 5 or 6 million DPS in our setup, and it is way more than you'll ever need, as you can see throughout a lot of those boss fights until you get to the really deep delve stuff uh, your dps won't matter at this stage anything like over 1.5 million as a reliable sort of damage source on melee is going to be more than enough so to get through the rest of the gear and all that we do have two socket tomb fists those were 10 exalts uh, we got five exalts going into uh, two socket bubonics um, a hail negator with two sockets was one exalt, but then with the enchant, I ended up paying five exalts for that. I made my own opal ring with some prismatic ring, uh, prismatic fossil spam, uh, which I then isolated a few mods, managed to multi mod, annulled the multi mod, and then exalted six chaos res. I then bought this crappy ring just so I could fill out some resists and int, and uh, this um, amulet I bought and. Uh, Simply put, you just need a spare prefix so that you can get damage while leeching, and it becomes a very large uh, amulet for damage, flat damage sort of scaling. And then you use a Lycosidae so that you don't have to worry about accuracy altogether. You put in some prismatics onto a Stygian belt, get one of these happening, and that's basically all of the gear, except for the Shroud of the Lightless. That's kind of an option that's up to you guys or up to whoever's building, but uh, it seems like a pretty good choice because you can get another Abyssal Socket, and this type of character does need some triple penetration across the board for Fire, Lightning, and Cold, so that sixth link there is actually pretty good as a sixth link elemental penetration. The current links here are Wild Strike, early damage with attacks, Ancestral Call, Multi Strike, and Crit Strikes. For single target, I drop Ancestral Call for damage on full life and crit strikes for elemental focus. Uh, it's pretty versatile. You can, like I said, play just about any skill you want with this sort of shit. I'd say the next best thing for my liking would have been Spectral Throw. You can do Molten Strikes, you can do Blade Flurries, you can do Lightning Strikes, Frost Blades, whatever the hell you want. Basically stack a bunch of flat damage and then do something like this. And you'll have a versatile any type of character that you really want. Uh, triple balancing a Wise Oak just means that you get triple penetration and damage reduction effect from that. And it's pretty hard to do when you've only got like one piece of gear giving you resists or two maybe even so uh, that was a bit of a challenge and the passive tree itself also utilizes might of the meek jewels i have two of these currently going here and here which simply means that it's buffing things like the life nodes so the life nodes are a lot stronger and more worth taking and that's where a lot of the life from our tree comes from as well as the resist nodes over here and these crit multi and attack speed nodes here too so it buffs all of that and quite commonly people will also put an unnatural instinct over here which means that they don't have to take these nodes or these nodes and they spec in through here and then you also get this life and simply an unnatural instinct basically frees up something like five or six passive points which is pretty strong but for 20 exalts i don't think it's strictly necessary to do so i just chucked another jewel in here uh, all of my jewels are pretty much abyssal except for this one which has crit multi so you do need some crit multi so at least one jewel that does that is pretty handy and also a wrath watcher's eye that just gives a bunch of crit the passive tree just goes around grabbing um crit multi for swords some elemental penetration we have point blank because one third of our attacks are projectile based and they are still um, an attack so it does work that way you've got vile pact for your leech 
Um, you go all the way over here to get int and a bunch of damage and stuff. And it's a pretty standard scion tree, I think. Going for the Slayer Ascendancy that then goes up towards Duelist so you can cut out a few points of traveling and grabbing Pathfinder. Though that's a very versatile option. You don't have to do Pathfinder. You can do things like Inquisitor, Elementalist, Jug, Chieftain, um, Trickster, Assassin, whatever the hell you want, it all kind of works paired with the Slayer, though as um, we already found out that is getting a slight nerf in next patch, I think it's probably still going to be worth doing uh, for pure endgame scenarios. That's probably all I need to say about this character. It cost me about 60 exalts to put together. You could do more budget options uh, for sure. You won't have anywhere near this damage, but you don't need anywhere near this damage. Uh, in any case, that's about all I need to say about it. If you want to try copying it, you will need a lot of currency. This is not a starter build. It's going to be tough to put together because Abyssal Jewels need to be pretty good to scale insane amounts of damage. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this melee character, and I'll see you next time.